And finally, the big kahuna, the one that blows everything else out of the water, glucose fructose. Glucose is the energy of life. Every cell on the planet burns glucose for energy. Glucose is so damn important that if you don't consume it, your body makes it. So it will take an amino acid and turn it into glucose. That's gluconeogenesis? Gluconeogenesis, that's right. It will take a fatty acid and turn it into glucose. And specifically, the glycerol portion of the uh, triglyceride will turn into glucose. So the Inuit, they didn't have any place to grow carbohydrate. They had ice. They had whale blubber. They still have a serum glucose level. And the reason is because you had to. You have to have a serum glucose level in order to power your brain, in order to power your heart. Yes, you, you can use ketones. Of course you can. But, you know, only if you're in a ketogenic state will you use exclusively ketones. And you also need glucose for structural changes in specific proteins and particularly hormones. So glucose molecules will stud TSH, LH, FSH, different pituitary hormones in order to increase their potency. It's one of the reasons why aging leads to defective hormonogenesis. For instance, hypogonadism, hypothyroidism is the loss of glycosylation on individual um, uh, uh, peptide hormones because of uh, the inability to add glucose. So that's an important thing. All right. But that's how important glucose is. Fructose, on the other hand, this sweet molecule, the molecule we seek, the reason why the food industry studs every food in the grocery store, you know, 73% of all items in the American grocery store have added sugar on purpose for the food industry's purposes, not for yours, because fructose is addictive, activates the nucleus accumbens, the reward center of the brain, in the same way that ho cocaine, heroin, nicotine, alcohol do, and drives dopamine receptors down, just like nicotine, you know, alcohol, you know, cocaine, heroin do. That molecule, fructose, is number one, uh, completely vestigial, to all vertebrate life. There is no biochemical reaction in any vertebrate that requires dietary fructose. That's number one. Number two. Okay, so, uh, sorry, I'm gonna just answer. So you're saying that even though we can process fructose. We have a limited capacity to process it in the same way we have a limited capacity to metabolize alcohol. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have one drink a day, yeah, you're okay. If you have two drinks a day, Depends on how big you are. You know, you and I yeah. can probably. I would argue two. two drinks a week is the maximum, but well, let's not go there. Right. The um, but but in terms of you're saying when you say fructose processing of fructose is vestigial, what you're saying is that we don't need to do it. That's this right. Is, it's like the appendix. It's an organ for which it has no function. Exactly, and fructose has no function in the human body. Period. You don't need it. You don't need it. You okay. don't need it. But our Diet is replete with it. In fact, our fructose consumption has gone up 25-fold since the beginning of the last century. I have to ask this now. I love fruit. I eat mm -hmm. berries galore, yep. especially since the price of berries seems to have come down. Mm -hmm. It used to be that you only get them certain times a year. Mm -hmm. I'm what you call a drive-by blueberry eater. Okay. So I'll just walk past and just take a fistful. You can't put them in front of me without me eating them. Yep. This is even difficult for me when other people I don't know are eating them. So. Right. Um, I eat lots of blueberries, mm -hmm. strawberries, blackberries if they're in season. Mm -hmm. I love them. No problem. Loaded with fructose? No. Plenty of fiber. Low fructose? Low fructose. Okay. In berries? Berries are the Thank lowest goodness. fructose uh, oh, yes. of all the different fruits. I was so worried fruits. about asking you this today. Not Thank a bit. You. Okay. Um, and fruit is okay because of the fiber. So the molecule, the fructose molecule is the same whether it's in a berry or in a banana or for that matter, in a Coca-Cola. The fructose molecule is the same molecule. The difference is that in the berry, it comes with a whole lot of fiber. In the banana, it comes with a whole lot less fiber. And in the Coca-Cola, it doesn't come with any fiber. And the fiber is what mitigates the absorption. So when you consume the fructose with fiber, so your blueberries, you're feeding your microbiome. That fructose wasn't for you.
But now I know that fruit is okay, especially if the fruit has a lot of fiber. Yeah. But fructose itself, especially if it's not partnered with fiber, yeah. is, first of all, not required for survival at right. all. But you're telling me is uh, problematic. Yeah. And let me tell you why it's problematic. We haven't gotten to that yet. We're just talking about whether it's vestigial versus needed. Now, let's talk about what fructose does. Turns out fructose inhibits three, count them, three separate enzymes necessary for normal mitochondrial function. Now, your mitochondria make ATP. Your mitochondria have to work at peak efficiency. That's what metabolic health is is mitochondria working at peak efficiency. Well, there are three enzymes that are inhibited by fructose. Number one, AMP kinase, all right? Now, AMP kinase is the fuel gauge on the liver cell. It's the thing that tells the liver to make more mitochondria, fresher mitochondria, because if your AMP levels are high, that means you've dephosphorylated a bunch of ATPs and you have to regenerate them, so you need some more mitochondria, so it's a negative feedback pathway. Well, you need that AMP kinase to generate that mitochondrial biogenesis signal, except that fructose, a metabolite of fructose called methylglyoxal, MGO, sits in the active site of the gamma subunit of that AMP kinase and actually binds to arginines in that active site, rendering that uh, uh, enzyme now dead. It's an irreversible inhibition because of the covalent bonding of that methylglyoxal, that aldehyde, to the arginine, and now that enzyme is dead. Okay, so it basically acts like a key that doesn't turn the lock but prevents the, the key that you want in that lock yeah. from entering the, yeah. the lock. It's like it's like gluing a lock shut. Yeah. Got it. All right. So that's so, one of the enzymes. That's one. Okay. Second one, ACAD L, acyl CoA dehydrogenase long chain. So this is necessary to cleave two carbon fragments off fatty acids to prepare them for uh, uh, metabolism. So it inhibits that one. And then finally, it inhibits carnitine palmitol transferase one. Now, CPT1. Now, that's the enzyme that regenerates carnitine. Carnitine is the shuttle mechanism by which you get the uh, fatty acids from the outer mitochondrial membrane through to the inner mitochondrial membrane so that they can be beta-oxidized for energy. So if you don't have that C, uh, CPT1, you're basically carnitineless, and therefore you can't generate um, beta-oxidation. You said fructose inhibits all three of these enzymatic pathways. Yep. As a biologist, I have to ask you, know, how potently does it inhibit them? I mean, because there's there are drugs that block receptors, and then there are drugs that block receptors with in, unbelievable affinity. Sure. So, you know, I mean, mechanistically in a dish, meaning in vitro, you can see sure. all sorts of things. But how how yeah. significant is this for like for obesity, for mitochondrial function in vivo in us? All right. So look, you know. The, the dose determines the poison, right? Paracelsus 1537. Um, there are toxins that are parts per billion and will kill you, like sarin, ricin, cyanide. By the way, cyanide is a good analogy because it's working on mitochondria. It's basically causing mitochondria to be de that. completely defective. All right. Then there are um, intermediate toxins like arsenic and carbon tetrachloride, parts per million, and they take a little longer to work. They're not going to kill you on the spot. That's why I can eat an apple seed that has a little bit of arsenic in it, but I'm not going to die. Right. And then finally there – and by the way, tobacco smoke goes in there. And then finally you have um, uh, weak toxins, all right, and, you know, where it's not one exposure that will kill you. It's, you know, 10,000 exposures that will kill you, like alcohol. Or toxic people. Yeah, or toxic. Well, <laughs> some, sometimes it only on takes toxic. one. <laughs> uh, couldn't resist. Sorry. Sometimes it only mildly toxic people. Anyway, the point is that fructose is in that last category. Hmm. So it's not what you do one day that kills you. It's what you do every day that kills you. And if you basically eat ultra processed food, high in sugar. For 10 years in a row, it's going to show up in terms of your comorbidities. And ultimately, yeah, it will kill you. And we have the data to show, you know, how many years you will lose. 
So right now in America, we pay an eight-year longevity tax. If you look at Japan, who uh, th they have a mean age of death of 88. We have a mean age of 80. Okay? We're paying an eight-year longevity tax just by living here. And we're talking about the healthy people. Now, if you have metabolic syndrome, it's a 15-year longevity tax. And uh, sorry, if you have obesity, it's a 15-year longevity tax. And if you have metabolic syndrome, it's a 20-year longevity tax. That is primarily, not completely, but primarily sugar. It's also, you know, um, omega-6s. It's also trans fats, you know, left over because now they're gone. But, you know, people are still suffering the ravages of the trans fats, you know, from the previous generation. Are they gone? I mean, I do remember as a kid when we had margarine in our refrigerator. This is actually yep. a big debate yep. in my home. Yep. One parent, I won't identify which, <laughs> um, was pro-margarine. The other was pro-butter, anti-margarine. Right. Um, the marriage didn't that's, last, but there were other reasons. That, that's probably but, why. <laughs> yeah. I went butter. Um, yeah. Butter, yeah. butter is fine. In fact, Time declared, you know, uh, front cover, butter's back. You know, um, margarine was the bad guy, without question. Um, and we know now, but you know, back when we thought it was a, a calorie, it was a calorie. We thought, oh, margarine. You know, it's the same. You know, nine calories per gram, and. We said it lowers your triglycerides. Bad idea. It was because what it did was it lined your liver because you couldn't break that trans double bond. And, um, you know, so they're, they're now gone from our uh, food supply. They're illegal. But they're illegal. They're banned. But you can make trans fats in your own kitchen by taking olive oil and heating it to beyond the smoking point. So... They're not completely gone. They're just gone from ultra-processed food. So now sugar is the big problem because of these three enzymes that you are inhibiting. The point is we, were, we started this with a calorie is a calorie. Well, if you are inhibiting mitochondrial function, then a calorie is not a calorie, is it? You're reducing the um, intensity of the furnace. Yeah, exactly. So this whole calories a calorie just makes no sense. And it hasn't worked at any level. And there is no study that actually shows that cutting calories makes a difference. And I can show you, you know, voluminous data that shows that virtually every weight loss study that caused, that led to, you know, caloric restriction basically didn't work, not for any length of time. I think the problem is there's a, there's a lack of useful language to dissociate this stuff, yeah. uh, you know, even just calling fat, fat, people think it means it's going to make you gain body fat. Totally. If we called it adipose tissue and lipids, we would have avoided this confusion. So I, I don't want to get there just yet, but well, I, I want to make sure with the carb food industry does this on purpose. Really? You know? Oh, absolutely. So they tell you a sugar is a sugar, which is not true. They tell you a calorie is a calorie, which is not true. And they tell you a fat is a fat, which is not true. Okay, this is very specifically. So when you're talking about sugar, you're talking about dietary sugar or you're talking about blood sugar? Because blood sugar is blood right. glucose. Right. Or and I never use dietary cholesterol or circulating cholesterol or, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So we, yeah. we've done this, um, you know, uh, to ourselves, but the food industry has really promulgated it because we farmed out nutrition policy and information to the food industry. So they actually use this for their purposes.